Hi folks, welcome to Next Class of Allegation. My name is Ravi Prakash, and in this uh, video, we'll be we'll be discussing different kinds of questions where we can apply allegations. Okay, different kinds of question, right? Some questions from equations, time speed distance, right? All those those kind of chapters where we can apply allegations that we'll see here. Okay, now, understand this? An amount of rupees one ninety four was collected from one fifty students. Each boy gives rupees one point two, and each girl gives rupees one point four. Find the number of boys and girls in the class, right? So obviously, you apply equation in this kind of question. No, I'll do very fastly, right? See this method now. Very easy, right? Simple. Apply allegation. If all the boys will give giving one uh, will be giving one fifty. Uh, if all the uh one fifty students are boys, right? So if all the one fifty students are boys, then the collection will be one fifty into one point two. Okay. If all the One fifty students are boys. Then question will be one fifty into one point two. That is one eighty. If all one fifty are girls, then what is the collection? One fifty into one point four. That is two ten. Okay, that is two ten. Okay, so one eighty for boys collection could be one eighty. From girls collection could be two ten. But what is the actual collection? So actual collection is how much? It is one ninety four. So what is the distance ratio or difference ratio? The difference ratio is fourteen is to sixteen. That is seven is to eight. So if difference ratio is seven is to eight, therefore weight ratio, weight ratio or quantity ratio would be eight is to seven. So eight for boys and seven for girls, right? The difference ratio would be eight is to seven. Eight is under boys and seven is under girls. Okay. So eight is to seven. How many students are there? Total one fifty. So one fifty students divided in the ratio of Eight is to seven. Therefore, eighty boys and seventy girls. This is the answer, right? Such an easy method, a very fast method, right? So what simple I do, I have done. If all the students were boys, the collection would have been one fifty into one point two, right? That is eighty, one eighty. If all the one fifty are girls, then what is the collection? One fifty into one point four, two ten, right? So boys one eighty, girls two ten. And what is the actual combined collection? One ninety four. Okay. Now, what you can also do in this question is you can just take collection of one boy. Collection of one boy you can take it as one point four. Okay. Sorry, one point two. Collection of one boy is one point two. Okay. Collection of one girl is how much? It is one point four. And what is the resultant collection? So resultant collection from each boy and girl is how much? So one ninety four students for one ninety four rupees for one fifty. So what is per student selection? So per student collection collection is how much? One ninety four by one fifty. Now same thing means if you solve here, you'll get again same answer. But this is very very difficult, right? You'll get the same answer. That is six is to, uh, seven is to eight, right? You'll get seven is to eight as the difference ratio. That is same thing. But here the calculation is much difficult, right? Because one ninety four by one fifty, it won't be completely cancelled. These are also in decimals. So solve some decimals and fractions to get this answer, right? Okay, so that's why uh, what I did, I changed all values to integer. Okay, and solved the questions like this, like this. Okay, this is also correct. This is also correct. Okay, but this is like lengthy calculation. This is lengthy calculation. Okay, this is the answer for this question. Fine. So see, uh, you could have marked this thing right now in allegation, right? We apply different concept here. Okay, so see, like here, what is the like collection? If you read like. What okay collection from boys is one eighty rupees right or the collection is here one point two per student so see what is that's that's coming like one point two per student okay one point four per student or oh, that is girl right so there one point two per boy one point two one point four per girl and one ninety four by one fifty per student so this ratio what I'll get is the ratio of quantity right that is I'll get the number of Students ratio or number of boys and girls ratio, right? Very point point. So you are taking the ratio number of student per allegate. You are you are allegating what you what you are allegating the prices. So the collection here, the collection is from whom? The collection is collection is per student. So that per student, so you get the ratio of students here in allegation, right? A small trick I am telling you to solve this kind of question, right? Collection is per student, so you get the ratio of student. Okay, mind this point now. I'll use it later. Okay. I'll show you how to use it later also. Now here, 
in an examination a student had to attempt all 60 questions right every right answer carries four marks and every wrong answer carries minus one mark if his final score is 165 if his final score is 165 how many questions did he attempt correctly right again same fundal applies the previous question okay if all the questions he attempted would be wrong okay because his correct answer will be somewhere between wrong and right if all the 60 questions where he attempted is wrong then he would have he would have scored minus 60 marks okay if all the questions yes minus we can use right you don't think uh, I can't I can't use minus right I have to show a number here right so minus I can use okay if all 60 questions he attempted is wrong he would have scored minus 60 if all the 60 questions he would have attempted is cur was correct was correct he scored how much 60 into 4 that is 240 but his attempt is between somewhere between some wrong and some correct so what is the resultant the resultant score it is 165 correct no issue what is the difference here? So what is the difference ratio? This difference is how much? 225. This difference is 165 to minus 60. So this 225 difference here. What is the difference here? 75. What is the ratio ratio? The difference ratio is 3 is to 1. Therefore, therefore, right. The questions ratio wrong and is wrong, under wrong, under correct. So what is the question ratio? Wrong is to correct. 1 is to 3. So questions ratio. 1 is to 3. So, again, see this again my point here. I told you last question, it was collection per student. So, you get the ratio of students here. Here, what is it? Here it is marks per question. Here it is marks per question. So, marks per question, if you are writing here marks per question, marks per question, marks per question. So, mark is per question. What is mark? Mark is per question, right? So, when mark is per question, so you get the ratio of what? You get the ratio of questions here. You get the ratio of questions here. In previous student correction is per student. That per right this per is question. So you get the ratio of questions here. Okay. It was per student. So you get the ratio of student here. Right. So mind that word per question or per student. Okay. So per question, right? So what is the questions ratio? 1 is to 3. So wrong is to correct. The question ratio is 1 is to 3. How many questions are there? 60 questions. So 60 to be divided divided in the ratio of 1 is to 3. That means 60 to be divided in how many parts? Four parts. So one part is 15. So one part is 15 and three part is 45, right? Therefore, therefore wrong questions are 15 and right questions are 45, right? So we'll so get this score of, so we'll get this score of 165 uh, in a very, very easy way and innovative way to solve this kind of problem. Okay, correct? This marks per question, right? Per question means if you're writing these data in per question, you'll get the ratio of per question. Correct. If you will get the ratio of questions. If you are writing this data per student, you will get the ratio of students. Right. So that per, whatever is a per dash. Right. So you will get the ratio of this dash here. Okay. What is in the last question is a student. So student ratio. In this it is question. So question ratio. This per dash. So you get this, this dash ratio. Here you get. Right. Can understand like this. Okay. Now move to next question. See, a person travels 285 km in 6 hours, right? He travels by bus at 40 km per hour and train at 55 km per hour, right? So you can see here what the data I have. A data, data I have is, is speed 40 km per hour, 55 km per hour and this is the average speed, right? We have the average speed also, right? That means combined journey. So a speed by bus is how much? Traveling by bus, a speed is 40 km per hour. Traveling by... Uh, train what is the speed a speed is 55 km per hour okay and what is the average combined of the journey okay what is the average speed it is 285 by 6 km per hour right now understand this first point if it is per hour now it is what this this data are what what we are allocating here we are allocating something time speed right that is distance per hour kilometer per hour so this is per hour so i'll get the ratio of number of hours here that means i'll get the ratio of actual it will be number of time we will we'll get the ratio of time right but that is a that is what that is after inversing right that is after inverting first i'll get the first i'll get the difference ratio what is the difference here so difference here is uh 285 by 6 is obviously more than uh, more than 40 so 285 by 6 minus 40 Okay, what is the difference here? 
55 minus 285 by 6. Okay. So first thing here will be, I'll wrap this here right now. What is the difference ratio now? So you can see here 285 by 6 minus 40. So if it is 285 by 6 minus 40 is equal to 45 by 6. And here what, what you get the difference here? It is also 45 by 6. That basically means that, that basically means that, what is this ratio? This ratio is 1 is to 1. So their difference ratio is 1 is to 1. So their actual ratio or weight ratio will also be 1 is to 1 only. It, it won't change, right? It won't change. The ratios will be actual ratio will be right. I, I know that what is the actual ratio or what is the weight ratio? It is inverse of difference ratio, right? But since it is 1 is to 1, so this was also 1 is to 1. So what we'll get finally? So if data is written in per hour, right? So what will get data? We'll get the ratio of what? We'll get the ratio of number of hours. That means we'll get the ratio of what? We'll get the ratio of number of hours. That is 1 is to 1. That means number of hours or time or time is divided divided in the ratio of what? 1 is to 1. That means total there are uh, total there are 6 hours. So that means he will travel. He will travel 3 hours by bus and 3 hours by train. So how much distance he will travel? Right. So distance he can travel is what is the bus speed? 40 km per hour. So 3 hours into 40 will give me 120 km and train speed 3 hours into 55 will give me 165 km. I have a bus, he traveled 120 km. Therefore by train he traveled how much? 165 km total 285 km. Right. So this is very important, right? Whatever data I'm writing here in per hour, per last question, per question, last in last question, what was given? Marks per question. So I'll get the ratio of questions here. Previous to that, collection per student. So I'll get the ratio of number of students. Here, distance kilometer per hour. So I'll get the ratio of number of hours, right? These kind of concepts are super important. Okay. Now, move to again next question. If goods are purchased for rupees 450, one third of them are sold at 10% less. What profit percentage should he sell the remaining to gain 20% on the food? Right. Again, listen here. Very important funda. If goods are purchased for rupees 450, one third of them are sold at 10, not less, sorry. It is loss here. It is loss. Not less. It is loss. Okay. Goods are sold at 10% loss. Okay. What profit percentage should he sell? At what profit percentage should he sell? Okay. To uh, the remaining, remaining to gain 20% on whole, right? So what I can write here? Loss, right? All, if some goods are sold at some loss, right? what is loss here? Loss is 10%. So how to show in loss of 10%? Right, minus 10%, minus 10%, right? What is the profit? He want profit of 20% on the whole. He want profit of 20%, sorry. He want profit of 20% on the whole. Okay, so see how to allocate here so loss is minus 10 percent and now what percentage should he sell the remaining to gain 20 percent on whole so some part is sold at loss of 10 percent let's say some part is sold at profit of x percent right and combined and then what is the result? combined result he want a profit of how much he want a total profit of 20 percent right so that's why positive only so i like 20 so positive here right suppose he wanted total loss of five percent so i would have write written here minus five percent Okay, loss to be de de uh, de denoted by negative value, to be denoted by negative value, right? So minus 10%, 20% and X percent, right? So some part of goods is sold at 10% loss, so minus 10%. Some part of goods is sold at X percent profit, so let's say X percent profit. And on total, he gained, uh, he want to gain 20%, right? So by this, he want to gain 20%, this equation. Quite easy. What is difference ratio? So what is difference ratio? This is 30. Right, this is 30. So this difference ratio is 30, right? And I know the total ratio also, right? See, I know the total ratio also. In this question, I know the total ratio, right? Because I know that this is one third, these are one third of the goods. That means it is if these are if these are one third of the goods. So for sure, these will be two third of the goods, right? The remaining will be two third. Okay. So what is the ratio? So ratio of weights will be how much? The ratio of weights will be what? One is to two. Because one third and two third, what is the ratio? One is to two. So the ratio of weights is one is to two. What is the actual difference ratio? So ratio of difference will be how much? It will be 
2 is to 1. Right? If the actual weight ratio is 1 is to 2, difference ratio will be what? 2 is to 1. Right? And this difference is actually how much? 30%. This difference is actually how much? 30%. So if two parts of ratio is 30%, that means one part of ratio should be how much? 15%. That's it. Right? One part of ratio should be 15%. So this difference is how much? This difference is 15%. So 15% further because 20 lies in between these two values. So this is like, if this is smaller, then this has to be bigger. So 15% further. So what is X? X is 20% plus 15%. X is 20% plus 15%. What is X? 35%, right? A very logical and a very fast way of solving this kind of question. Very fast. Apply in profit and loss also. Right. So this kind of concepts are super duper important. Right. How to apply. See this kind of questions, concepts, right. Even if you find in some books, I will apply typical allegation method. And that will again take, because it's a variable, right. You write two ratios. You write again, solve it, right. No. This you can solve simply without pen, right. You know, if you know the concept now, now read the question, right. Suppose you're getting the same question in, in the exam. by change data. What will you do? Right. You simply, you know that, okay, minus 10%, total 20%, and this is X. Fine. What is the difference? 30. Okay, I want difference, right? So what is the actual ratio? 1 is to 2 because 1 third, 2 third. What is the difference ratio? 2 is to 1. 30 is 2, so 1 is 15. 20 plus 15, 35. Hardly 10 seconds to take, right? If you get this concept, right? These are very important concepts. Okay. So what is the answer? Answer is 35%. Value of correct. I hope it is clear, right? It should be very clear. This should be very, very, very clear. Okay. Next question now. A cricketer whose bowling average is 15.8 runs per wicket takes 5 wickets for 37 runs in his next match and thereby improves his bowling average by 0.3 runs per wicket. Okay. Find the number of wickets taken by him till last match. Okay. See, now, a cricketer whose bowling average is 15.8 runs per wicket till now. Okay. So, till now, his bowling average, till now, his bowling average is 15.8 runs per wicket. Okay. And he takes now in this match, in this match, he takes five wickets for 37 runs. Okay, fine. Fine. And thereby improves his bowling average by 0.3 runs per wicket. Right. This is important point. This is very important point. Right. Here you can get confused. Okay. What this point is, is he improves, he improves bowling average by 0.3 runs per wicket. So, improve bowling average by 0.3 runs per wicket. Okay. He improves bowling average by 0.3 runs per wicket. That means basically, his now, his present bowling average, his present bowling average is how much? Earlier it was 15.8. Now it improves, right? Improvement, it is how much? 15.8 minus 0.3. Don't make it plus 0.3. His present bowling average now 15.5, right? Improving the bowling average. Right? There are two big, big, big difference here, right? People who are not so aware of cricket actually, right? This will get confused, right? So, but you not, it need not uh, to uh, know a game to solve this kind of question, right? It is never given like that. So it's always logical. Logical means what? It's given that it is 15.8 runs per wicket, right? So that means wicket is in denominator. Okay, it's like 15.8 runs. Per, per wicket. Right. That means, that means, what is the average? Average is number of runs given by number of wickets taken. Right. Per wicket means, runs per wicket means, runs in numerator and wickets in denominator. So, if more is the wicket taken, less is the bowling average. That is good, right. That is good for any bowler. If less, if more wicket he takes, less is the bowling average. Right. If less wickets he takes, and more run he gives, that means he has done bad bowling, right? So if he gives more runs, so numerator is more now. And if he takes less, less wicket, so this denominator is less. So if more runs, what is the average? What is the effect on average? Average will be more, right? That means that is bad for a bowler. He don't want more average. He want less average. He want that denominator to be more, that number of wickets to be more, and he want to give as less runs as possible, right? So that's why improving bowling average means subtracting. Improving bowling average means subtracting, right? Now, if you get this data, now this question becomes very easy now. See, I'll solve this question very fast now. Till now, his bowling average is 15.8 runs per wicket, okay? In this match, he takes a bowling average, he takes 
फाइव विकेट फॉर थर्टी सेवन रन वट इज एवरेज नाउ सो हिज एवरेज हाउ मच नाउ हिज एवरेज इज फाइव विकेट फॉर थर्टी सेवन रन थर्टी सेवन रन बाय फाइव विकेट इट बिकम्स हाउ मच इट बिकम्स थर्टी सेवन बाई फाइव इज वॉट सेवेंटी फोर बाई टेन इट बिकम्स सेवन पॉइंट फोर रन पर विकेट सो इट वॉज अर्लियर फिफ्टीन पॉइंट एट रन पर विकेट इन दिस मैच In this match, he takes seven point four runs. He gives seven point four runs per wicket. Earlier, it was fifteen point eight runs per wicket. This match, he takes seven point four runs per wicket. That means less runs for a wicket. That means his bowling average will improve. And it became how much? It became how much? It became fifteen point five. It improves by point three means it became fifteen point five. Okay. So what? What is the difference ratio? What is the difference ratio? The difference ratio how much? So the difference ratio here is point three is to eight point one. Point three is to eight point. The difference is eight point one. So if the difference ratio is point three is to eight point one, what is the actual ratio? So actual ratio will be eight point one. Okay, actual ratio will be eight point one. Eight point one is to point three. That is, that is, it is cut. It is go twenty seven times, right? That is twenty seven is to one. Okay, that means actual ratio. This match, right? Till now, till now, and this is for this match. Okay, so what is this ratio now? Till now and this match, this ratio is two number of twenty seven is to one, right? Now what is this twenty seven is to one number of wickets ratio? Why number of wickets ratio ratio? Because it is fifteen point eight runs per wicket. I told you. Runs per wicket. That per wicket means at final after allocating. What will get the actual ratio? The actual ratio will be number of wickets. The actual ratio will be number of wickets. That is eight point one is to point three three. That is twenty seven is to one. So till now twenty seven wickets in this match. The ratio is one wicket, right? So that means now I should rub here. I should rub here. This is very important, right? This kind of methods will not find in books, right? So very important method. This is very important. Okay. so what till now so till now to this match right that ratio is 27 is to 1 which ratio number of wickets ratio right because it is given 15.8 runs per wicket i told you whatever after comes after per will get in the ratio right so per question marks per question so question ratio Collection per student, so student ratio. Okay, so fifteen point eight runs per wicket, so wicket ratio twenty seven to one, right? And in this match, he has taken how many wickets? Five wickets. That means this one, this one represents five wickets in ratio. If one is equal to five wickets, then twenty seven equal to how much? Twenty seven into five. That is one thirty five wickets. This is the answer. Find the number of wickets by him till last match. That means till last match. Okay. Till last match or till now I'm telling to previous to last match right and this is this match so till last match it is has he has got to one thirty five wickets this match he has taken five wickets so total now he has got one forty wickets but we need to find till last match it is how much one thirty five wickets this is the okay so I hope you got this concept right very important same thing right you'll find find uh, if you apply typical allegation also because it becomes very easy because since I get need to get the ratio I all told you earlier right. Uh, applying typical allegation also is very easy when you know the correct ratio. So if you apply typical allegation, how will it go like? So it will go like typical allegation. How will it go like? It will go like till now, yeah, till this match he has taken fifteen point eight runs per wicket. Okay, in this match, okay, he has taken how much? Thirty seven by five. That is seven point four runs per wicket. And combining these two, what he has taken? His bowling average will become has improved by fifteen point three. That means it became fifteen point five. What is the what is the actual this right when applying allegation when applying typical allegation when applying typical allegation. What you get you get the actual ratio directly. You get the actual ratio directly. But so many times I have told you the difference right because any book you will study. In all the books for the questions, always typical allegation will be applied. But I'm trying to stress on the focus of the difference method, right? Because difference method and typical allegation method are will take same time for these two questions, right? Just inverse it, right? That is, if point three is to eight point one, just inverse eight point one is to point three, 
so still takes not it will take same time absolutely right but for some questions right it will solve very fast like for that profit and loss question and do it very fast right minus 10 percent x percent 20 percent no need to apply allegation or the ratio simply difference of 30 is 2 so 1 is 15 so or i have so shown it earlier also right in those in those kind of question you can apply by difference method very faster so typical allegation directly gives the actual ratio so it'll give the actual ratio directly it'll give the 8.1 15.5 minus 7.4 is 8.1 this is still this is still now or till last match and this is in this match right 8.1 is 2 and this minus this is how much it is 0.3 what is the ratio 27 is to 1 so if 1 is 5 wickets then a 27 is how much 135 wickets so till now he has taken 135 wickets in this match he has taken 5 wickets so you have to find this this is the answer 135 wickets okay so get this funda right get this funda very important funda so you should get the difference always even if it's a answer uh, if you solve any book you have question of difficult typical allegation right convert to distance method right It'll always be faster for many questions okay so we'll be doing the other question in next videos okay thank you